Stop the buzzing. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Today's prelude music consists of two pieces by Beethoven. So we're into Beethoven today on this beautiful spring morning. The first piece is the theme that Beethoven used for a set of variations on his 12th piano sonata. And the second piece will be actually the first movement of his sixth piano sonata, which was written when he was relatively young in his later 20s. And so I hope you enjoy both of them. Uh, the second one is quite rousing. <laughs>
sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord 
shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow down before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nation. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God has loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given up us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the savior of the world. God abides those who confess that Jesus Can I finish the reading? Is that Available, Amy? Up uh, that, uh, okay. We are now ready for our hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't finish the reading. What? <laughs> we haven't finished the reading? You no, know, some stuff came up that interrupted. Mm hmm. We, we lost the screen share. Linda, how much more did you have in the reading? I think it was about halfway through. I, I can't, I don't have another resource. There it is. There you go. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that the love of God, that the love of God has for us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. But those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. God who creates us, redeems us, and gives us new life. Amen. Jesus is the vine. God is the vine grower, and we are the branches. If we are not bearing fruit, for example, if we are not following Jesus, if we are not loving other people, those unkind parts of us need to be discarded and destroyed. We know how we are to act, how we are to bear fruit. Jesus has given us a long list of guidelines and mandates. Some of them are easier to follow than others, to be sure. And COVID has made it more difficult to do unto others. Laundry love and new horizons have missed our help and our fellowship. At the beginning of the penitential order of Eucharist, we hear Jesus' words, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Loving God includes loving other people, even the seemingly unlovable. You may ask, how can I love a white supremacist? How can I love someone who is violent toward a person just because they perceive them as different? We are told, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Is that even possible? Yet we know that some prisoners of war, as well as some of the early Christian martyrs, have done just that. In the present time, we may ask ourselves, who are my enemies? Love your neighbor. That should be easier. But sometimes we forget that all God's children are our neighbors. We are not asked to love just the people who agree with us. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That requires us to stop and think before we speak or act. Those of us who are learning about how our white privilege helped us get where we are, are also finding out that, for example, words that we have used in the past are no longer ex acceptable. They never were appropriate. Now we try to be sensitive about anything that might offend another person. I know people who mock the term politically correct, not realizing 
that that way of thinking came about to help us be more sensitive. It's a good thing. We are asked not to judge other people, lest we be judged. That's where our prejudices come into play, when we judge a person without knowing them. Putting a human face on the thing that we fear or don't understand can change us. A conversation with an open mind with someone on the other side can make all the difference. More often than not, we discover that there is common ground after all. Jesus showed us by his example to pay attention to the spirit of the law, but don't let the letter of the law stand in the way of helping those who need us. He healed on the Sabbath. Was that wrong? And yet he was faulted for doing just that. It helps to be flexible in our thinking and to realize that we humans are fallible. I remember the Peter, Paul, and Mary folk song, Have You Been to Jail for Justice? Part of it says, you law-abiding citizens, come listen to this song. Laws were made by people, and people can be wrong. The more you study history, the less you can deny it. A rotten law stays on the books till folks like us defy it. The law is supposed to serve us, and so are the police. And when the system fails, it's up to us to speak our peace. Starting back in the early 60s, I discovered that Peter, Paul, and Mary were preaching the teachings of Jesus, disguised somewhat in folk songs. If we are passive, change will not happen. Some years ago, at our National Church's General Convention, many of us were wearing a button that said, lead, follow, or get out of the way. It was a not so subtle way of telling us to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And yet at the same time, we are asked to be humble and simple like a child. Children aren't encumbered with the kind of know-it-all thinking that makes us adults think we're superior. We think we have all the answers. We don't. Jesus cautions us to be prepared. We recall the bridesmaids who didn't think ahead to have enough oil for their lamps. Consequently, they missed the party. I've never felt sorry for them. They had plenty of time to get ready. The other bridesmaids figured it out. Those of us who are older understand the need to think ahead, to get our lives in order. We know that we can't do it all, either individually or as a group. Feed the hungry and give water to the thirsty. Clothe the naked, the homeless. Welcome the stranger. Visit those in prison. But Grace Church folks have been offered an opportunity to provide some dinners for a young man from the Republic of Congo and make him feel welcome here. He is not in sanctuary, but he is living at the UU Church in Manchester. It's, at some point, he'll be able to find a job and then an apartment. His name is Chrisma. He's 28 years old and he is on the path to citizenship. More details about him and how you can help are in the May newsletter. When Jesus warns us to be aware of false prophets, I think of what WBZ radio says before each newscast. Today, more than ever, it matters where you get your news, how true that is. When Jesus commissioned his 12 disciples, they too were given instructions about their behavior and their demeanor. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. He told them, you don't need money 
or extra clothes or anything else that will weigh you down. Just do what I've taught you to do. God will take care of the rest. Earlier, we touched on the subject of love, but our reading from the first letter of John gives us more of a focus. Last week's portion of this epistle called us to action in a very direct way. Let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. This week, John ties it all together. God loved us so much that he sent his only son into the world. Because of that love and that sacrifice, we ought to love one another. The message is clear. We will seek and serve Christ in all persons and strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. And we will cherish the wondrous works of God by protecting the beauty and integrity of all creation. The hope is that the way of love will become a way of life. Going back to our earlier metaphor of the vineyard, Jesus speaks of himself as the true vine. We are the branches. We are part of the whole. We need Jesus to guide us just as Jesus needs us to carry out his work in the world. As one of those branches, I get my nourishment from Jesus, the true vine. It enables me to go out into the community, wherever that may be, to share God's love. We don't travel the way of love alone. We learn along the way. We meet new friends. We are saddened by deaths. We rejoice at births. May we give thanks for the opportunities that God gives us and pray for the wisdom and patience we need to serve others. Let us pray. O oh God, who created all peoples in your image, we thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by ever widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray.
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join through prayer with everything that lives. Let us acknowledge to God the one life we share, saying, O oh God, who makes us one, hear our prayer. O oh God, your Holy Spirit is alive in all the earth. Your spirit that moved and shaped land and sea, trees and beasts, still moves and shapes us into creation. Through Christ, we know your one Holy Spirit, for you are God of all. That all the world may know your spirit, we pray, O God, who makes us one. Hear our prayer. Open your world before our eyes so that we see far and near. Show us newly what lives around us, over and behind and within. Give us the mind of Christ, O God, who makes us one. Hear our prayer. Bring us to one another that we may hear and understand each other. Bring trust and sympathy between the peoples of the world. Make all nations one household with many rooms. O God, who makes us one. Hear our prayer. Heal those who are sick. Cheer us who are guilty. Love us who are alone. Join us who are distant. Call all the world to yourself, O God, who makes us one. Hear our prayer. Enliven the church with the spirit of Christ. Through us, give your loving spirit to a world in need of comfort. Make our many gifts one offering for the world. O God, who makes us one, hear our prayer. O God, keep our minds inside your love, for we are many parts and need to be one. We beg for this unity, which only your spirit can give through Christ our Lord. And now we pray for those who are close to our hearts. Prayers for healing for Nancy, Steve, Paul, Patty, Mateo, Teddy, Clark, Jeff, and John. for Therese, for Haley, for Joe, for Josie. Thanksgiving for Jeff's new job and for everyone who has supported us in love and prayer through the difficult years from Shelley. For the people suffering in India. From Julie for Mary Lou and Vince dealing with aggressive Alzheimer's. For Linda, who is facing illness from breast cancer. And from Jill. Thanksgiving for our 57th anniversary this day, Jill and Ken. From Linda, prayers for Margaret as she grieves the loss of her Greg, her significant other. From Deb, for Lori and her family, and for Jerry, Arlene, and Jim. From Steve Smiley, prayers of healing for Norma. From James and Barbara, for Gail Bindley Taylor, that she may come through this difficult period strengthened in her faith. For Shelley, from Shelley, Thanksgiving for the life of Jeff's uncle, Charlie Rosenthal, who died earlier this week. Steve, Steve Smiley, Prayers of healing for Norma. 
and Deb, prayers of continued healing for Craig and Linda, prayers for those alone and lonely, that they may be comforted by our love and our outreach to them. So if, if I have skipped anyone, um, unmute yourself and add it because the chat went by kind of fast. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. Join hands, disciples of the faith, whatever your race may be. Who serves my father as his child is surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christly souls are one in him, Throughout the whole wide earth. So the announcements are on your screen. May 5th, Endowment Committee meeting. May 5th, also property meeting. The Endowment meeting is from 1 to 3. Property meeting at 7. May 9th is Mother's Day. And May 16th, Families in Transition, the 2021 Walk Against Hunger at 1 p.m. And you may contact Gail Schumann if you have questions. And the May Book Group is May 18th from 12 to 2 on Zoom. And we are reading Anne of Green Gables. And all are welcome to come to that even if you haven't read the book. But I think it'll be a joy to read that again. Some of us haven't read it since, well, for decades. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. For our postlude this morning, surprise, surprise, Another English voluntary <laughs> beginning on the harmonium and continuing on the electric organ stop here. Uh, this voluntary is in D and it is by William Croft. William Croft went from the 16th to the 1700s and uh, to him is attributed the tune for the hymn, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, just for a little bit of spring trivia so that you can amaze your friends at parties. Thank mm -hmm.
You may all unmute and say hi to one another. Hi there. Thanks, Amy. For hi, Amy. Hi. Hi, Captain. Hi. 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 She's she's sitting off to the side. She's she's sitting on the side. I want to see her. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Hey, Mom, Hope you have a great day. Love the dog. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher, for the card. We loved it. Happy anniversary <laughs> to you both. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Hi, Ken. Hi, David. Hey, Happy hey, Mark. anniversary, Thanks. Jill. Thank, Thank you, Gail. You. Thank yes, you. Jill. Happy yeah. anniversary. 50 yes, anniversary. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Yes. Yeah, wow. Oh, I see this. Yeah. Thank you, Carter and Ken, for your music. Yes. yes. You are most welcome. You've been yeah. practicing. Dane, excellent sermon today. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the sermon. Look forward Thank to you. the day when we can play together again. You will actually hear a recording of that on Pentecost. But someday soon, there's hope we will be able to do it live. 